We are continuing on with our NHL preview series of the Canadian teams in the new Northern Division sponsored by Scotiabank. Today we're taking a look at the Toronto Maple Leafs. We'll discuss their preview coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we're continuing on our previews here for the upcoming 2021 NHL season. And today we're taking a look at the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, of course, in case you missed the other video, essentially how we're going to work this is we're going to take a look at recapping the season quickly from last year. Take a look at how they finished. We're going to take a look at what their objectives were going into the NHL offseason and whether or not those objectives were met based on the additions and subtractions of the players on the roster that were made by the NHL general managers. And then we're going to take a look at the players on the roster that we're going to classify as bounce back candidates, breakthrough players, and then of course ones with an uncertain future. So we'll kind of look at some key players here that need to be strong performers in order for these teams to succeed. So first up, let's recap the Leafs season from the 1920. Of course, we know that it ended with another disappointing playoff performance of losing to the Columbus Blue Jackets in the qualifying round. So for all intents and purposes, the Leafs technically didn't qualify for the playoffs because that qualifying round uh, was to get into the first round of the playoffs. The Jackets did surprise them. Uh, they were able to shut down their high-powered offense. Some very opportunistic scoring. We saw Pierre-Luc Dubois, of course, be a big reason as well that they had a hard time containing. But, of course, we also know that this Maple Leaf team uh, has gone through many changes. Now, the regular season, though, was pretty decent. They were 13th overall in the NHL. Again, they were going to be well on pace to make the NHL playoffs had they gone through the rest of the season if we wouldn't have had to pause the season and gone through the traditional playoff format that we, the NHL's been using. They were at a record of 36-25-9 for 81 points when the season was paused. So, again, they likely would have been around third in the Atlantic Division. Um, you know, hard to say how the rest of the year would have played out or the playoffs had the, the traditional format been able to continue and finish up but let's first up take a look at now what i believe were the main objectives for gm kyle dubas heading into this offseason then we'll take a look at the rest of the moves to see if we feel those objectives were met heading into the next season now in my opinion first and foremost this team needed to solidify the blue line we know kyle dubas was heading into the offseason with a lot of question marks on defense we knew they had some key guys like tyson berry and cody cc on expiring contracts we knew the odds of them coming back were incredibly slim, and we knew that they needed not only to replace those guys, but they probably needed some different types of defensemen to really give that blue line, you know, some much more needed size, grit, and you know, become tougher to play against. They have some offense already from a few guys led by Morgan Riley, and they just needed to kind of diversify what they had back there on that blue line. That was certainly near the top of the list. I know one of the other main objectives too was determine the long-term outlook for goaltending. There was a lot of trade rumors circulating around goalie Frederick Anderson heading into that offseason as well. Uh, of course, we know that they didn't make any significant changes in that regard, but determining that long-term outlook was something that I certainly feel was being talked about a lot, and I guess we'll see uh, once we get into the next part of the video if they've really addressed that or not moving forward. I think it's fair to say as well that they wanted to become a team that was a little bit tougher to play against, add some more grit. Obviously, as much as this team has oodles and oodles of highly skilled forwards, they're not necessarily, at least in the past, were not built for you know a long playoff battle and just didn't have that necessary grit and sense of toughness, I guess, is what many people felt uh, that was missing for them to be able to really you know have a better success in a long-term playoff battle. Really, Kyle Dubas as well made it known early on that they wanted to add some more veteran guys who could provide some leadership as well. I mean, obviously this team has a lot of young players and even though they're young and highly skilled and you know they have some guys on the team already that could be leaders, and some guys with some very valuable experiences as well, because a lot of these guys are young and are still learning how to win. Let's take a look at the additions and subtractions of this roster to really see if they've accomplished those objectives. Now, first up, let's take a look at the subtractions. As you can see here on the screen, uh, there's a lot of players that were no longer with the team. And primarily, you know, you have the blue liners like Cody Cece, as well as Tyson Berry. We knew they likely weren't coming back. Uh, so they're obviously gone via free agency elsewhere getting contracts. We saw some trades. Uh, we talked about for a long time that we were likely going to see trades for guys like Kapanen and Janssen. Both guys were moved out. Uh, obviously, uh, Kapanen goes to Pittsburgh. Janssen goes to the New Jersey Devils. Uh, they also departed ways here with guys like Kyle Clifford, Freddie Goche, and Pontus Aberg. Now, of course, in the case of like Kyle Clifford, he was brought in for that uh, kind of guy like last year for the playoff run who could have that experience, the Stanley Cup pedigree, that uh, toughness and grit, and he was not able to stick around. So to me, that's certainly 
a bit of an issue. Now, of course, they did bring in some other veteran guys that we'll talk about here next, but uh, you know, certainly going to be a different looking lineup for sure. And I guess we'll have to make the argument of whether or not they really got better, at least in that part of the team. Now, let's look at all the new faces because Kyle Dubas was a busy guy adding lots of new players for the upcoming year. Now, of course, to replace the departed defenseman, they signed guys like T.J. Brody and Zach Bogosian in free agency. Of course, T.J. Brody was with the Flames a long time. Bogosian had a chance to rejuvenate his career last year in Tampa, getting a Stanley Cup. Uh, so both have a fair bit of experience uh, in that regard. And certainly, you know, uh, guys that are more known for their defensive play. So and, and in terms of Bogosian, somebody who can be a little bit physical as well. So that's certainly another element added to the blue line that they felt was missing. We also saw another unique addition too from Europe, a European free agent signing in Miko Lettinen, who looks like he could be a major game changer for the Leafs back there. Obviously they have Morgan Riley who could produce a lot of offense, but a guy like Lettinen to come in as your secondary source of offense, maybe on a number two power play and longer term, like he looks like he's the real deal. Had uh, arguably one of the best seasons outside of the NHL in terms of offensive defenseman last year. And he could end up being a real steal. The Leafs have done a great job Finding players overseas, and this could be, you know, the next great grab here uh, outside of the NHL that they've been able to do. So Lutton to me looks like a real good signing. So those three guys are really going to change the dynamic of that blue line back there. And again, for the second year in a row, really, we're going to see a very different looking Leafs blue line. And we'll see if this one can be more successful than last year's version of that. Now in the forward group, of course, they also added a lot of veterans and some different guys here, mostly through free agency. Of course, they signed Jumbo Joe Thornton, longtime NHL veteran. Of course, still chasing that Stanley Cup. And of course, we got word here recently in the beginning of camp in the last couple days that uh, Joe's likely going to start on the top line uh, with Marner and Matthew. So that's not quite where a lot of people expected him to go. Uh, but obviously, he can still be a terrific playmaker. Uh, he's got a ton of experience, one of the best passers of his generation. So we'll see how that works out. But I know a lot of people thought he might be the third or fourth line center when he was first signed. But it looks as though Sheldon Keefe has other plans for Jumbo Joe. Now, of course, they also added some other veterans like Wayne Simmons, for example. Wayne Simmons can kind of give you some of that grit and toughness that they lost in letting Kyle Clifford go. Uh, obviously, Simmons is a longtime NHL veteran. At one point in his career, was considered a bit of a power forward. It certainly slowed down. Not the same player he was, you know, even five years ago, four years ago, but still somebody who can contribute, uh, certainly more in a bottom six role, uh, give you some toughness, give you some grit, and give you a few goals here as well. Of course, they also have guys like Jimmy VC that they signed out of uh, Buffalo, who was a free agent. They brought in Alex Barabanov, another free agent from the KHL. So, of course, he's expected to come over and compete for a roster spot as well. They also brought in Joey Anderson, which came in that trade with uh, Janssen and the Devils. And, of course, uh, for extra goaltending depth, they brought in Aaron Dell, formerly of the San Jose Sharks. So, of course, they'll have uh, guys like Freddie Anderson as well as Campbell at the NHL level. They'll have Aaron Dell as their number three. And, of course, don't forget as well, they did bring back and resign Michael Hutchison, uh, of course, who's on a uh, contract here for another couple of years too. So uh, some of that could be to make sure they have enough goaltenders exposed for the expansion draft too. I would assume at this point that Dell and Hutchison won't get a whole lot of playing time, assuming that Anderson and Campbell remain healthy and can take the bulk of the workload. Now, as far as players that I'm going to classify as the bounce-back players, players that need to bounce back and have better seasons in order for the Leafs to have more success than last year, I'm going to start with goaltender Frederick Anderson. I thought his year last year was okay, but he can perform at a better level. I also think that he's playing for a contract, so you're bound to get a better season out of Freddie. Uh, it happens a lot across NHL players, but they play their best hockey when they're needing to get a new contract. It's quite a common thing. Of course, he's still... You know, towards the tail end of his prime, in my opinion, I think he can still have a few more solid years left before we see more of a decline. It's quite possible. Uh, I'm not really sure that his, what his future holds in Toronto, but he certainly does need to bounce back and be better if the Leafs are going to have a better season. Of course, in my opinion, the blue line should be better as well, which also should be beneficial to him. Of course, not giving up so many great A chances. And of course, in a condensed season with a lot of back-to-backs, of course, they didn't have Campbell all of last year. If he can play well and kind of take the pressure off a little bit in the workload, that'll help as well. Giving Anderson more breaks, make sure he's more rested, should go a long way as well. And I'm also going to include Jumbo Joe Thornton in that bounce back category. Of course, we know his numbers have been down. Uh, he's been at the tail end of his career, seems like forever, but at the same time, he's still playing, still contributing, still having lots of fun out there. And I would think, given the opportunity, it sounds like he's going to get in a top six role 
um, that if he can remain there and produce, that he should be able to bounce back and give you one of the better offensive seasons that he's had, at least in the more recent years. Now, I don't think we're going to see Jumbo Joe put up numbers like he did when he was winning Art Ross trophies or MVP way back in the day. But at the same time, you know, he should be way more productive than, uh, than he was the last few years at least. So we will see. But those two guys certainly need to be better this year than they have been more recently. Now, as far as breakthrough players, uh, who can really step up and take their game to another level and have a breakthrough? I'm going to include Ilya Mikheyev in that. Uh, Mikheyev was uh, off to a great start last year and then ended up getting hurt and missed a big chunk of the season. A uh, bit of a freak uh, you know, injury. Uh, he should come back better than ever. Uh, he was a really good fit in Toronto. Um, so I expect him to, to take over where he left off and take his game up even another notch. So I fully suspect that Mikheyev's numbers are going to get that much better this year and should continue to grow. And we could also throw in a guy like Nick Robertson who get a bit, bit of a, I guess, a taste of the NHL in the, in the bubble. It uh, looks like he is ready. Another young guy coming out of junior with a lot of potential who can certainly jump in and contribute there. So I think we're going to see Robertson get maybe not as much of a role as we might think. It's hard to say how many games and minutes he gets to play because they have a ton of depth at the forward position. But at the end of the day here, I think when he's given the opportunity, he's going to play and produce well. And I guess we'll see a bit of a breakthrough from Robertson this year. Now, as far as players with uncertain futures, the main one we're looking at there is goaltender Freddie Anderson, of course, on an expiring contract. We know the Maple Leafs held trade talks around him this past offseason. They were trying to see if they could find a longer-term solution that might be uh, you know, a potential upgrade or potential, you know, upgrade with cost savings or at least cost certainty. They were not able to find that deal that made sense, so they're sticking with Freddie Anderson for another year. At this point, I don't believe that they've really engaged in contract extension talks. That is something we might see later on. And it really boils down to uh, what the options are going to be. This past offseason, we had a lot of goaltenders on the market. We could end up with that kind of situation again, um, see how many goalies become available. Obviously, that's not going to be you know an easy uh, position to upgrade, though, because obviously a lot of goalies that are top goalies get signed longer term, like we saw some of the top ones in this year's free agent class. And you know, I'm not sure what their options are going to be. But if Freddie Anderson is going to continue to be the guy in Toronto, uh, there's not a lot of money available with a flat salary cap to continue paying him. So they're going to have to make some adjustments. Uh, I'm not sure how they're going to work things out. But obviously, his play and what kind of options they have will dictate what they do. But he certainly is one of the top guys on the team right now that beyond the current season, we don't really know what his future holds and what his role will be with the organization moving forward. Of course, you could probably include a lot of their veteran guys that signed one-year deals. So you have like Thornton, you have Spezza, you have Wayne Simmons, you get Jimmy VC. As far as what their future holds, it's difficult to say because a lot of that really boils down to how they play and how the organization season fit in beyond the coming season. But at the end of the day here, they do have some uh, some flexibility for how they move this team forward. But as we've said before, and as Elliot Friedman recently pointed out on his latest 31 Thoughts podcast, if the Maple Leafs don't have success this year, I do think there's a really good chance we're going to see significant change next offseason. According to Friedman, he feels Dubas won't have a choice but to make a significant splash on the trade front if they don't make it past the first round or if they have another you know season where they don't see you know, further success, and a guy like Nylander or Marner would be the most ideal candidates to be moved. Uh, the feeling that Matthews and Tavares would be more untouchable than they would be. And obviously, at the same time, their contracts, especially in the case of Tavares, probably would be tougher to move anyhow. But obviously, the Maple Leafs are a team in this Canadian division that should see a lot of success. They're certainly one of the higher uh, powered offensive teams in this d- division, along with probably the Edmonton Oilers. When you have guys like McDavid and Dreisaitl, they can keep up and score in bunches as well. Uh, I think it's fair to say that, like I said, with Freddie Anderson playing for a contract, uh, that's going to hopefully see some improvement. And then you've got an improved decor as well. I do think the Maple Leafs will stand an excellent chance to uh, win this division. Uh, I'm not sure that they're going to finish first, but I'd say they're going to finish, you know, probably one or two in the division, more than likely. I think that, you know, they have a lot of reasons, a lot of things going well here. The moves that they made, which is going to allow them to have that success, but the big test is going to be in the playoffs. You know that they're not only going to battle these Canadian teams all year, but they're going to play another Canadian team in the playoffs should they finish top four, which should be, should be I stress, something that they can rely on and bank on happening here. And obviously after a long season of playing these teams, a lot of times a lot of these other teams are going to be really able to pick them apart and know what they have to do for planning and coaching 
to kind of have more success against them in the playoffs. So will they be able to move forward? All these veterans that they've added are good hockey players. They have a lot of great experience, but a lot of them, and I cannot stress them all, haven't necessarily gotten it done and have that, you know, that Stanley Cup to their name. Outside of like Zach Bogosian, a lot of the other guys they've added, like Jimbo Joe Thornton, Wayne Simmons, like they have had great careers, but you know, they haven't gotten it done at the highest level yet. So will they be the pieces they need to put them over the top and get them either to the Stanley Cup or at the very least a deeper playoff run so this team can really take steps forward is uncertain right now. I'm not really sure what they're going to be made for, but I guess we will find out here in short order as the season's not far from getting underway. So let me know your thoughts on what you feel the Maple Leafs will accomplish this year. Is this team built for playoff success? Will we see a deeper, stronger, more successful playoff run in 2021 from the Maple Leafs? And do they really have a legitimate shot at the Stanley Cup? Let me know your thoughts down below and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.